Kobe Bryant was the most fierce competitor of all time. He did not back down from anyone. When playing against other superstars, he only upped his game. Whether it was talking trash to Jordan or dunking on Tim Duncan, he loved dueling with the greats. In honor of the Black Mamba, we are going to look at his best moments against other stars. This is Kobe's best play against every NBA star. All gets a screen from Odom. Great play by Bryant. Kobe will take it in and throw it down on Paul. Historic way would be to finish this one. Kobe down the middle, in the air, shows up a... Uh, his version of the hook shot. Oh, 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 oh. hesitation. Oh, 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 what a move on Kevin Durant. Oh, what a <laughs> They nice. even like it here at the Ford Center. Change it. Man, that last pass by Kobe. Ooh, Kevin Durant once, then the double pump. <laughs> Splash. <laughs> I think the definition of greatness is to inspire the people next to you. I think that's what greatness is or should be. It's not something that's, that, that lives and dies with one person. Mm. It's how can you inspire a person to then in turn inspire another person, that yeah. then inspires another person. And that's how you create something that I think lasts forever. Yeah. And uh, I think that's our challenge as people, is to, um, is to figure out how our story can impact others and motivate them in a way to create their own greatness. There's a quote from uh, one of my English teachers at Lower Marion named uh, uh, Mr. Fisk. He had a great quote that said, rest at the end, not in the middle. And that's something I always live by. You know, I'm not gonna rest, I'm gonna keep on pushing now. There are a lot of answers that I don't have, even questions that I don't have. But I'm just gonna keep going, I'm just gonna keep going and I'll figure these things out as we go, right? And you just continue to build that way. So that, I try to live by that all the time. And what brings you the most joy right now? Being with my family. Really? That is, man, that is the most fun. It's just, um, you know, it's uh, hanging out with them all summer, uh, being able to, to like do things that I ordinarily couldn't do. Yeah. Because uh, of training, because of sure. season and stuff like that. So being around them and watching Bianca grow up, because there are a lot of things that I miss with Natalia and Gianna because mm. I was playing. So being there every day with them is so much fun, man. So it uh, brings me the most joy. What does love feel like? Hmm. Happiness is such a, I mean, I think I would describe love as happiness. I think I'd describe it as a beautiful journey. Mm. Um, you know, it has its ups and downs, right? Whether it's in marriage, or whether it's in the career, you know, things are never perfect. Yeah. But through love, you continue to persevere and you mm. move through them, you move through them. And then through that storm, beautiful sun emerges. Yeah. Right? And inevitably another storm comes. And guess what? You ride that one out too. Yeah. So I think love is a certain determination and persistence to go through the good times and the bad times with the someone or something uh, that you truly love. My parents were, were great. You know, growing up, you know, they instilled in me the importance of imagination, of curiosity, and understanding that, okay, if you want to accomplish something, I'm not just going to sit here and say, yes, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, but you have to also put in the work to get there, right? So they taught me that at a really early age, man. And uh, when you grow up, as a kid thinking that the world is your oyster, all things are possible if you put in the work to do it, you know, you grow up having that fundamental belief. My mom was there on a daily basis. Uh, my father uh, was really influential at a really critical time where I, you know, I had a summer where I played basketball when I was like 10 or 11 years old in a very prominent summer league in Philadelphia called the Sunny Hill League. Where my father played, my uncle played, and they were like all-time greats yeah. and some stuff. And, Bo Chamberlain played in the league, you know, uh, Earl of Pro Monroe played in the league. And here I come playing, and I don't score one point the entire summer. Really? Not one. How old were you? 11, 10, 11. And you're playing against other 10, 11-year-olds? Uh -huh. And you didn't score once? Not one. Were you in the game? I was in the game. 
How'd you not score? Because I was terrible. Really? <laughs> yeah. That At happened. 10, 11 years old, you were that Awful. Terrible. I mean, I, you know, and I had these big knee pads on because I was no. growing really fast. And I had socks all the way up here and I had like the high top skinny, fade, yeah. like skinny as hell. And I scored not a free throw, not a nothing, not a lucky shot, not a breakaway layup, zero points. And I remember crying about it and being upset about it. And my father just gave me a hug and said, listen, whether you score zero or score 60, I'm going to love you no matter what. Wow. Now that is the most important thing that you can say to a child. Because from wow. there, I was like, okay, that gives me all the confidence in the world to fail. I have the security there. But to hell with that, I'm scoring 60. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> right, right. Right, and from there, I just went to work. And I just wow. I stayed with it, and I kept practicing, kept practicing, kept practicing. You know, when you're in, a, in this culture, in our society, you, you can do some phenomenal things individually, um, but they'll never reach their full potential unless you do them collectively. And you have to figure out how to do that. The challenge for me was always uh, compassion and empathy. I think about 09, things started changing for okay. me. I started really uh, making a conscious effort to better understand. And that doesn't mean, I mean, you have compassion and empathy so you go soft on them. It's more like you, you, put, you put yourself to the side and you put yourself in their shoes and understand what they're feeling. And then, you have to make certain decisions of, okay, what buttons do I need to push for this yeah. player to get them to the mm -hmm. next level? So it's never, it's not sit around and all, it's all happy-go-lucky right. type of thing. Your leader, your job is to get the best out of them, um, even if you know, they may not like it at that time. One of the things that I had to learn is how to get the best out of my teammates. Yeah. And most people think it's a simple thing, you know, pass them the ball. You know, but that's not how you make guys better. You have to really affect their behavior. How do you do that? So, you know, like, you know, I would tell guys, you know, we got it back to backs. You know, I don't care if we're in Miami, I don't care if we're in a great city of Chicago. We can't go out, we gotta get rest. Right? Back to back games. Back to back games, yeah. right? Monday, Tuesday. You play Monday and play again Tuesday. The guys aren't gonna listen, right? You don't, you know, right. So, you know, a few times say, all right, we'll all go out. <laughs> go out together. Really? I'm, I'll drink with you, right? But the next morning, I'm banging on your door at five in the morning. Let's go. They're not getting Where are we going? <laughs> I hung out with you. Now you come hang out with me. Wow. This is what we do. All right, let's go. And we're at the gym. We're working out, right? We hit the bus. We go to practice. We play that night. And they're dead. And they're dead. And they're like, oh, lesson learned. Really? <laughs> lesson learned. Take them out once. Listen, if you're going to do that, do that. But don't let that compromise what we're here to do. Right. This is why we're here. This is why you're here in the first place. What does losing feel like to you?